Hello everyone. Today we want to talk with you about how we can maximize responsiveness to feedback, especially during this time of remote learning or blended learning. It's really important that we are able to connect with our students and able to provide the most effective and specific feedback possible. Now it's one thing just to maybe comment on a Google Doc or send an email, uh, but it's another thing to really uh, dig deep into student work and be able, being able to provide effective feedback. So the first aspect I want to talk about is choice. Now it's really important that we provide students choice and we've heard of student voice and choice a lot the past few years, but and how it helps with feedback. Uh, students are able to put more effort and more meaning into something where they're given a choice on how they can respond. So for example, if there's a task or um, some assignment they're working on, if we give them a choice in how to demonstrate learning, um, they're much more able to express their thinking uh, in a positive way because they chose the method that best works for them. Second aspect is focus on strengths and specifics. Whenever we are giving feedback, it's really important that we focus on what are some things that the students did well. Um, what are ideas, concepts where students were able to articulate high levels of thinking? The research from Buckingham and Goodall says that whenever we are focusing on strengths, it catalyzes learning and it's really, really important. Also ask questions. Don't automatically make assumptions. Whenever we, we see something in student work, instead of maybe giving critiques, we want to really dig deeper and ask them questions because through that inquiry, we're able to describe or actually able to explore and discover um, what they are thinking and the pictures that they are building in their mind. Don't do the thinking for students and Fisher and Fry have some excellent research around prompts and cues. The important part of building learning is having students do the thinking making those cognitive connections in their mind. That only happens when we are prompting students as opposed to us telling students what to think. Peer feedback is also very important for students to get feedback from other students. Uh, many times students have a different lens through which they see experiences than us as adults. So it's really important that students learn how to work together with each other. And then I also like 60 second video interviews, especially during this time of remote learning Students are able to check in with you. You don't have a lot of time because you may have 25, 30, or 150 students if you are a secondary teacher. And so it's really important that we provide some academic conference time for students. And so 60 second interviews are great because it's a quick check in. You're able to get right to the point and you're able to get some really important feedback data. The next resource I want to share with you is the feedback resource from the National School Reform Foundation. And it gives you three levels of feedback, warm, cool, and hard feedback. I like this because it is a scaffolded approach, especially if you are meeting your students for the very first time. Uh, those very first few assignments, you might want to start with the warm feedback column. And then as you get to know students, and as students really dive into more complex works, you're able to give some cool and some hard feedback and really ask those probing and deep questions. As far as how you give feedback during remote learning, it's really important to consider synchronous and asynchronous feedback. And synchronous feedback, you can use tools like Google Meet or Zoom. You can set up breakout rooms easily in Google Meet. I really like what Ron Berger suggests in the kinds of feedback we're given. Make sure it's kind, making sure it's specific, and making sure it's helpful. Um, that frames the feedback so it's the most positive possible. Uh, also using Pear Deck, and you can use some apps that, that smash well with the Zoom, so you're able to make your feedback and presentations more engaging. And then asynchronously, I like to use WeVideo to submit video reflections, and those video reflections can go right into Google Classroom, Seesaw, or whatever learning management system you're using. Padlet is also really good because they have some preset templates and you can leave like sticky notes that students can use Padlet as well as teachers and you can create some great feedback loops using Padlet. Marco Polo, Flipgrid are also great tools. 
especially when it comes to checking in with students uh, with social emotional learning. Uh, I would advise you check out all of those tools. I hope you found this helpful and it's really important that we are connecting with our students, especially during remote learning.